Hey. What's up, everyone? We are live at five. It's Friday. Friday, TGIF. Do you know the song? Yeah. Thank God it's Friday. Oh, of course. Yes. February 8th. Yeah. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And over here, we have social media maven Hi. and Gala. Guys, we made with it. With a headband. We did some it. Bun, some giving, bun work. Some bun work. I'm into it. Thank you. <laughs> giving us a look. <laughs> she is. I'm I mean, it's Dragon. And oh my God, Michael Campano's here. Michael Campano. From the Share oh, Show. Yes. Former Fierro. Former Sound of you, you know him. Yes. We're going to yeah. get to Current him. Current smoke show. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> First today's top five. <laughs> All right, this West, this Pulitzer Prize winning play is heading to the West End. Sweat is what we're talking about. I loved this play. It's I'm actually a little hot in the studio yeah. too. It is. So we, we are you might sweating. be witnessing yes. sweat by the end of this episode. Uh, Lynn Nada just it's sweat. It's a great play. Oh it's my God. It's such a great play. And it won her her second Pulitzer Prize. She is the only woman to hold two Pulitzer Prizes. Which you literally brought up in the morning meeting I did. yesterday. What a great piece of history. <laughs> Ryan is carrying yeah. on the, making sure everybody knows that. I want everyone to know about Lynn Nottage's <laughs> accomplishments. Yeah, so of course, Sweat, um, it was at the Donmar Warehouse. It had an acclaimed run there. It starred Martha Plimpton, who is amazing oh, as I well. I wish I could see her in that role. I know, me too. She's and so great. she plays Tracy in the show, and she is transferring with the production. It is headed to the uh, Gilgud Theater. Um, it will play June 7th through July 20th. Um, if you're not familiar with the play, it's set in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, Lynn Ottage spent years interviewing people from there to right. sort of capture between 2000 and 2008 is when the play takes place about these people that worked on a factory floor together, and some of them were being laid off, and there was a picket line, and lots of drama happens. Um, but it's absolutely incredible play. Um, Lynn, Lynette Linton directs the production that is moving to the West End. Additional casting, in, who will be joining Martha, uh, that, all, that information is forthcoming. We don't know all of that. But if you have the chance to see Sweat, it's an absolutely incredible play. You should absolutely do it. I agree. All right, we found out a stage and screen icon has passed away. Oh, Albert Finney. Albert Finney. I, who has done so many amazing things, but this morning when we were talking about it, I said, I love him on Aaron Brock. Right. And, and you I were like, me too. Me too. But I, mean, I also tried to, we're also huge fans of Big Fish, and he was the dad in Big oh, Fish. Oh, my I'm God, I'm going to start us. crying. Stop. Because now I'm going to picture the whole death, whole, the bed scene. I, and I feel wait like a can't. minute. I can never watch Big Fish again now that I, now that we've lost Albert wait, Finney. He was, the he, great Albert Finney is 82 years old. Uh, he died February 7th in London at the Royal Marsden Hospital. Um, cause of death was a chest infection. He started in a theater. He was in the party on the London stage. Um, he replaced an ill Laurence Olivier in Coriolanus oh, at Stratford. Wow. Oh, wow. Fun fact. Uh, he did many Shakespeare. Then he came to Broadway and Got two Tony nominations, one for Luther in 1963, and then he was in A Day in the Death of Joe Egg in 1968, mm. a great play. A great Five play. Oscar nominations for Tom Jones, Murder on the Orient Express, The Dresser, Under the Volcano, and Aaron Brockovich, Aaron Brockovich yeah. which is a great movie, by the way. So good. I still think it'd make a great musical. It absolutely would, yeah. Uh, thank for you. sure, Stephanie J. Block could play Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> Just push him up. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, uh, he is survived by his wife and his son and two grandchildren. What, what a great legacy. Oh, also, Daddy Warbucks. Uh, Daddy Warbucks, yeah. I was going to say, yes, Annie. most famously. Yeah, yes. So, uh, R.I.P. Albert Finney. All right, and a bunch of your favorite people are in the star-packed reading of this classic novel. So many big stars are participating in a private industry reading for Into the Wild. This uh, was a book written by John Krakauer. It is a, a biography of a young man who decides to leave all of the trappings of his suburban sort of well-to-do upper middle class life behind. He hightails it across the country, heads to Alaska, where sadly he died. What? Spoiler. Yes, spoiler! I saw alert. that movie. Yes, you did. So it was directed <laughs> by Sean Penn, turned it into a movie in 2007. Um, the, the, the nonfiction book is best-selling, very acclaimed. Um, Fantastic people involved in this. Lila Neugebauer is directing. She oh. did the Waver Waverly oh, Gallery, yes. of course, from the Wolves. Uh, Jennifer Laura Thompson and Michael Park from Dear Evan Hansen. They will be playing the parents. Um, and then you also have John Ellison Conley, 
John Cullum, Ryan Faust, Amber Gray, wow. Giselle Jimenez, Nahal Joshi, and Ryan McCartan. Wow, that is a lot of it's people. It's great people involved. It features a book and lyrics by Jana Allard and music and lyrics by Nico Sakalakos. Uh, news on further development of this as a musical is forthcoming as well. Um, Can you say I, the composer's name again, please? I just Nico like, Sakalakos. I more believe time, it's Nico more Sakalakos. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you know, I honestly, I'm going to reveal something to you. I hate Into the Wild. I fight wow. about this with my husband all the time <laughs> because I find it what he did so selfish to his poor family. But you know what? I think it meant you're supposed to come up with your own thoughts about it. Do you prefer you know? Into the Woods? I do prefer Into the Woods. <laughs> yes. There are mm -hmm. options now. <laughs> yeah, but I'm excited to see what this looks like as a musical. Yeah. All right. And this cast is reuniting for one night only. Hey, do you know Susan Blackwell? I've She's heard of her. Mm -hmm. uh, she hosts Side by Side by Susan Blackwell, the Broadway.com series. I first met, uh, we first got introduced to Susan Blackwell when she was on Broadway starring in Title of Show. My goodness. And uh, like they hosted, following. the cast of Title of Show hosted a Tony Night video for us. And that's, that's sort of where, right. that's where that's the right. collaboration started. And that. now yeah. the cast of The Cult beloved musical title of show is reuniting for one night on March 11th at 7.30 at the Broadhurst Theater. Uh, so, of course, it's Susan Blackwell. Uh, you may also know Heidi Blick and stuff. You may also know Hunter Bell and Jeff Bowen uh, and Larry Pressgrove, who is the fifth member of the team, musical director. The, the original was directed by Michael Bress, who is in The Share Show with today's guest, Michael Campano. Um, and of course, the musical started um, off-Broadway in 2006, and then it was at the Lyceum Theater the summer of 2008. It's a lot of fun, and it's Such all about show. sort of creating a show, and just go see it. The it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a great night. All right, and last but certainly, certainly not least, it is never too early to talk about Christmas movies. No, it's... Wait, I forgot to say that's benefiting the Actors Fund, by the way. Uh, yeah, title it is. Show. Title of show. It's a benefit, it's, so I'm yes. sorry. Go ahead. Um, and Hallmark Christmas movies are benefiting all of you because they are amazing. <laughs> Did you know that the Hallmark Channel put out last year 37 Christmas movies in You know who's in obsessed with them? Patty Mirren. Patty Mirren mm -hmm. is she, she obsessed with them. She writes about it all the time on social media. And now she's going to be the star of one of them. She's secreted <laughs> that. <laughs> Patty Mirren and Kristen Chenoweth are going to be the stars of two upcoming Christmas movies that will premiere in November of this year. Chenoweth is starring in, it's called The Christmas Song, and she's a youth choir director who needs to craft a big number for the school's holiday concert, but finds herself distracted when a boy with a gold Golden Voice joins her choir, oh. which will come as news to his widowed father. Look at that. His wow. widowed father doesn't know that he's got this beautiful voice. Chris and Chenoweth's going to bring out the best Patty in him. Doing? And so Patty Murin will be featured in Holiday for Heroes, which centers on a woman and a soldier who exchange letters for years and eventually meet. Look at that. I'm that, already sold. That's I can't freaking That's fabulous wait. and romantic. Yes. Okay. Before um, I let you guys, I want to mention yeah. that the Grammys are this weekend. They are. So we want to wish luck to um, the following shows that are nominated for show album. Uh, Bands Visit, Carousel, Jesus Christ Superstar Live, My Fair Lady, and Once on This Island. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and How do you pick? the fantastic Josh Henry, who was in Carousel, is going to be doing our Instagram. He's taking us to the, yeah. to the Grammys. To the right? parties. Live. So watch yeah. all to that. To the getting and readies. I wish them all luck because now the actors get Grammys too, which is it's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. how they help, help a me got. Come on. All right, yeah. it's yeah. time. It's time to bring him on. It's, yes. Thank you so much, Ryan. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope much. you have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much. You too. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell us more about today's guest? All right, Michael Campano is currently starring in The Share Show on Broadway. He has also starred on Broadway as Fierro in the hit musical Wicked, a Pittsburgh native and graduate of Carnegie Mellon, Univer or Carnegie Mellon School of Drama. He made his television debut as Rolf in the NBC live telecast of The Sound of Music starring Carrie Underwood and can be heard on the cast recording his other credits include Lancelot and Camelot, productions at the Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera, and in concert with the Phoenix Symphony and the Carolina Philharmonic. Please list all of your comments and questions below, and please welcome Paul and Michael. Hey. Hey, Broadway.com. Uh, thank you for the hair. That you, you're serving hair. Hey, thank you for the hair. <laughs> Where do you I think, always, where do you you think all, I get it right from? Right now, it's really, it's going on in all kinds of directions. It's good. <laughs> and the cleft chin, that's always good. How you doing, sir? I'm great. I just have to say, what a glow up. Last time I was on uh, Live at Five, it was two years ago with Wicked, and it was just that white. Was it? Batch. It was it great. Was, it was like a 
cardboard behind you, right? <laughs> yeah, we were like in a cardboard. Were we like box. in my office or something? No, we no, no. I was with Imogen. I was with Imogen. Oh. Um, okay. And so we were in this studio, but it was just a white backdrop yeah. to okay. like Live oh, wow. Five. That's, I'm really this sorry about that. Is a, <laughs> well, we decided it was time to have you back because we had <clears throat> properly fixed it up for yeah, you Yeah, as the kids say, a glow up. A glow up. <laughs> a glow up, I like yeah. that, a glow up. Yeah, Let's just, can I'm we trend that it. hashtag Literally. somehow? Oh, it's been trending. The Live at Five glow up. Uh, how are you, sir? <laughs> I'm great. Share show. I'm great. Share You're show. In a musical that people love and people go crazy at the end. And it's, yeah. How's it going? It's great. I think we're finally settling into it and getting a chance uh -huh. to enjoy it. Because you're what, a couple months into the run? Yeah, we're about now. two months into opening. Right. And we were just working, 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 trying everything. And I don't think any of us took time to really sit in it and, and get the uh, response that we were expecting. Yeah. But audiences are coming in so excited and they're leaving even more excited. And it's it's allowing us to really feel that energy and, and, and come into each show with so much newness and so much excitement. It's been so fun. It's hard to walk into a theater that says, let's do this, bitches, as you're walking in and not think, well, you know what, we're going to have fun. You know what I mean? I walk by Which the theater all the funny. time, and I see, and it's just great. I love it's it. It's so funny, and I think the show, a part of the show's success is that when we started working on the script, everybody took it so seriously, as they should, right? right. But us as actors, the, the show is filled with such good actors mm -hmm. that we looked at the script like it's the crucible, mm -hmm. and we were like, here's my attention here, and this is why Cher's doing this. And, and that work helps, yep. of course, mm -hmm. and it's a supports it, but coming into the theater and, and seeing all the artwork and um, the, the other tech components, it's, yeah. it's just, it totally glamorized it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah, I think, I think that's what we're exploring now, yeah. the, the fun of the show. And it probably helps that I saw the show in Chicago and it, yeah, I just want to say it's so every time I see you in those environments, it's so nice because you're so supportive Aww. and so positive. You know what I mean? Those are, those are such stressful moments. But uh -huh. you seeing you at all the previews and opening in Chicago and I remember seeing you at uh, opening in Mean Girls in D.C. You're always just so positive and you're that you're, you're such a support. And it's it's truly so nice to, to see you in all of those. Thank moments. you. So this is not really about me. But what else? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was at the opening in Chicago. Opening yeah. night, And. It's so interesting to see the show in Chicago and then to see, I talked to Teal Wicks about it when she was here. Yeah. To see. She did Live at Five? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To see oh, the Teal the Wicks. progression, because you're right, in, in Chicago, it was very, um, it was like a theatrical concept sure. and it was very structured in that way. Yeah. And you guys were still having fun within it. Right. But then when it got here, it kind of felt like, like, let's just like glow it up, glow up. Glow up. It's it a glow was a up. we Broadway did glow, glow up. up, truly, in right? many ways. Yeah. The it, spirit of it really sort of like turned into something else. Yeah, it became a share show. Right. You know what I mean? I think I think in Chicago it had so many different styles. Mm -hmm. it, it reminded me a lot of beautiful with a lot of book scenes. Yeah. And um, we were going down so many different journeys of share. And I feel like really what they they took the time so and they took the critiques from the Chicago critics who were great yeah. so well, and they really just found the style of the show. And I feel I think a lot of people, the feedback is that they feel like they're spending a night with with Cher now, mm. and it, it helps because she didn't narrate it in um, mm. Chicago, and now she narrates the whole show, the three shares narrate mm -hmm. the whole show, which really allows you to spend a night with Cher. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Stop it. <laughs> Take it down a notch. I will see myself out. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you, you, the audience really spends a night with Cher, which is what they want. Everybody There's wants so to spend a night with Cher, including Rob Camaletti, <laughs> your he character. He spent many a nights with Cher. Uh, so. Yeah, so you play one of the men in Cher's life, the, the love of her life, I believe she has said in interviews. Yeah, Correct. even uh, she came up to my dressing room and talked to me. I know, I want to hear previews. about this. It was pretty wild. It's crazy. It, T just talk about this moment. Did you know she was coming up the stairs? So it was, was like... Was it pre-planned? Did she just <laughs> pop in the door? I could hear her what footsteps would your hair look like? up the stairs. <laughs> what were you wearing when she walked in? <laughs> oh, so, LOL, I was wearing my <laughs> stage manager costume because um, oh, I was getting ready for the, name? for the show. <laughs> You play you don't two remember characters. his name? Yeah, he's Lee, two. the Lee, whole point the of the stage Cher show. manager of Act One. He's very <laughs> I important. I love Lee. It's so funny. I play the stage manager in the beginning of the show, and I actually am more like Lee than Rob Camaletti. People funny. see me and they think I'm like slick and smooth, and I'm I'm actually not. I, You're Lee. Yeah, to a big truth bomb. I'm like a, I'm very neurotic, and I'm this like this. You know, when people meet me, they're like, "You're really bouncy." <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Anyways, so yeah. So um, the company manager came in, and she was like, "She was going to come talk to you just a little bit about Rob." Oh just a, oh just just a, just give you some insight, and I was like, perfect, perfect, great, great, great. So I was like, like very previews cool. and yeah, it was like the second week, uh, or it was like 
uh, a week before we opened. Okay. Um, she spent a lot of time with us, which was so great. And she came into my dressing room, and and the stage and the company manager was there, and I was like, "Are you gonna stay?" And she was like, "No, no, no." So like, she closed the door, and it was me and Cher, and I was like, "Hey, Stop. Yeah, like, what do you say, right?" right. Um, and I was like, "Hey, how are you?" Um, I was like, "Do you want to sit down?" And she was like, "No." And she just stood there, just smiling, and I was like, "I'm gonna sit down." Um, so I sat down, and she just, it was so genuine and sweet, and she really just wanted to help me understand the endowment of that relationship and how mm. much it really meant to her. And uh, a great thing for me was she really helped me find his groundedness and his support because I'm, I'm doing scenes with Stephanie J. Block, right. who I'm a big fangirl of. So <laughs> who isn't? I know, right? So I'm like standing with Stephanie, starstruck, and with Cher, starstruck. Um, and this is only my second Broadway show, and uh, I really was the first. Fiera. Wicked yeah. was the first. Yeah, Rose. There it is. <laughs> Were you an Alphaba? That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Wicked was my yeah, Wicked was my first. So I'm still I'm still fighting my sense of being grounded in the theater community. There's so much as a younger actor, you feel like you need to validate and feel mm-hmm. feel worthy to be there. You know what I mean? So. Um, Cher actually really helped me. She said, no matter if we were in a fight or anything and I lose my temper, he was always the cool one, the grounded one. He would go back and get a cookie and he would come back and I forgot what I was mad about. And it really helped me hmm. find my, my groundedness and my center with Stephanie J. Block, who's so powerful. Yeah. There's literally times me and Stephanie sing a little duet together and we're like right in each other's faces. And I swear by the end of the duet, her voice is so powerful. My face is like blown back. You know what I mean? After she's done singing. Wait, what song is that? I found someone. I love that song. Peter Cetera, right? Are you Peter Cetera? Yeah. It's a, huh? Isn't that what it is? What are you talking about? Who wrote the song? No, who sang it? Stephanie J. Block. No, but I mean, the, the real song. Oh my gosh, they're interchangeable. The real song, the pop song, isn't it? I thought it oh, was I'm Cher's I'm thinking, song. What's oh, I'm sorry. I'm mixing it up. Yeah. Just ignore me. <laughs> yeah. So she, Do you mind? Face, go back <laughs> to your face. <laughs> Welcome to Live back. at Five. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Love you, Peter Satan. No, no, no. Her Stephanie J. Block's voice is so yeah, powerful. Right. She's such a powerful woman yeah. that it was a lot of my work to find my strength and my groundedness because I needed to match her level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm Lee, remember? I'm yeah, like yeah, this yeah. like yeah, you're Lee and then right. That's more um, you. Yeah. <laughs> but you're you're awesome. And um and it's a really hey. interesting part of the show because their relationship was very this he was a real I mean, Rob is still out there. Uh, maybe he's watching. Who knows? He hasn't seen the show. I he hasn't seen the show yet. But he's, uh, you know, he's soon. kind of. He had a very big moment in the public eye. I remember it very vividly. Yeah. Everyone called him the Bagel Boy. Yeah. Because he like worked in a bagel shop he when did, when yeah. she and then he was like a bartender. He was like a real like kind of working class wannabe yeah. actor guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was suddenly blown up into this like. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really crazy to think about, and you kind of have to capture all that, in in in. In a moment, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. we have about 10 minutes and right. it's it's zero to 100 very quick. Right. And actually, Fierro prepared me for that because mm. people say he's not on stage a lot, but when he is, it's zero to 100. You know right. what I mean? You can't come on and be like, ease into the show. And uh, that's actually the biggest challenge too because Lee's so like mousy and neurotic mm. and then Rob is so grounded and laid back and I have about 10 minutes to get into Rob. So um, it's actually a big, big challenge when you have less time on stage because mm-hmm. you have to come and match the energy of the show and match the energy of Stephanie who spent this whole show creating an arc. Right. And uh, it's so fun though and it's so gratifying because it's just helped me find, like I said, my strength as an actor and being with Stephanie and Jared and Teal, like true veteran, Michael Barres, Emily Skinner, it's an all-star cast. Know, and spending amazing. time with them has really allowed me to find myself as a person and, and bring that to my work as opposed to being a younger actor trying to be like, I, I'm here, I'm here and I'm worthy. You know, like yeah. you, you can like me. It's, it's, I've learned so much from just watching those people work. Right. And that's been the biggest gift for me. Speaking of the young uh, actor version of you, I first saw you on The Sound of Music Live. Oh my goodness. Which, what, like eight, 8 billion people watched that yeah. or something? 18, I think that's the exact 18 number. Million. Yes. Yeah. Close. That's crazy. It is crazy. How nervous were you that night? It was very similar to this, right? So we're in a studio with no audience. There was no audience. That was the first one. So it was like... Yeah, so so actually it made me feel a lot more comfortable. Right. Um, but what was crazy about it was, I don't know if they still do this. I haven't really been involved in any of the live musicals since. Um, <laughs> do you want to do one? Which one would you want to do? I don't know. Depends on what they, okay. depends on what they do. All right. Okay. Um, 
the, the music came out of nowhere. So it felt like a real musical. The track would just start playing. There was no band or anything. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a pre recorded track. So it came out of nowhere, like thin air, when we were supposed to sing. And I was like, Lisa, you shouldn't go home. And I was like, do, 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 do. And I was just like, oh my God. So it felt like we were really in a real show. Right. Um, and yeah, less nervous. I actually. You talked about Patty Murin. She's been a she's been a big idol for me because she's speaking out so much about anxiety and mental mm -hmm. health and mm -hmm. and destigmatizing that. And I suffer from terrible anxiety, and I have since high school. And it's just uh, when that gets in your mind, it's hard to shut it off. So actually, performing in front of live audiences is a lot more harder for me. Oh. There's been many a time where I had to do like breathing exercises on stage in the moment. Wow. Um, so. You have yeah. to really like keep yourself in check. Yeah, really keep yourself in check. What are, um, what are tips to, are there, are there certain things to do? Do you find that it happens when you don't take care of yourself in other ways or? Being an actor is so hard. And I think it's like funny we say that because my parents are like, you work for three hours a night, but it's so, it's so <laughs> challenging because it's, it encompasses your whole world. Um, yeah. When you wake up, if you like are going through breakups or just trauma in any sense, and right. you have to, you have to, learn how to shut it off when you're mm -hmm. an actor, but it's, you're, you're never shutting it off because unless you're like a method actor, which I think is crazy and stupid, um, it's not real. <laughs> it's always you dash the character, right? There's never a sense of like, you're just like turned into another person. And it's so challenging as an actor to kind of channel and, and shut off because mm -hmm. you never really do. So um, in terms of like help, I think it's, I think the destigmatization of it is really helpful. When I, when I suffered from anxiety in high school, the biggest thing that helped me was learning that other people go through it. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. Cause it's, right. it basically is your emotional nervous system taking over and it takes over your logical brain and you're like, this is reality, but it's not, right. that's a whole nother live at five, LOL. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, well, I, how you work LOL on to your regular speech, I, by the way. I don't even know that I do it. It's just <laughs> sad. I'm trying to glow up, as you can say. I'm 29 now, Paul. I'm trying to say as young oh, as I can. Oh, you're going to hit the 3-0. Well, I just turned 29 in January. Oh, okay. So yeah, got time. Got a while. I'm actually just trying to make a career happen before all of this goes away. Oh, is it going to yeah. go away? It's thinning a bit. <laughs> we don't have to talk about this. It is. Yeah. This is what Live at 5 fantastic. really wants to hear about. It looks fantastic. Oh, you flatter me. I think you're fine. <laughs> I you're you're okay. going to be fine. Okay. Um, I feel like, Caitlin, there's probably people asking questions. Yep. So we don't want to ignore a, those got people. got <laughs> What are they saying? All right. David said, I saw the show five times in Chicago. Whoa. Wow. Um, what is your favorite change since then? Hmm. That's a great question. A lot of changes. A lot of changes. I really enjoy can you see how i'm trying to think right now i'm trying to like get you along get my speech <laughs> i really enjoy um i think like i said before i think it's more impactful now because they allow the shares to to run the show and you spend much more time with stephanie who is current day share mm -hmm. so or star or star if you prefer she's the star right she's at that level of her life and them narrating the show and taking the audience through just really allows the audience to care for her more. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's they spend more time with her. They get they get more personal with her. They get her humor a lot more, which I think mm -hmm. the show really does really well. It it decided a style and sets on the humor. Right. And I remember reading the script. We were like, oh yeah, it's it's just so goofy. We were like, okay, okay, um, but it makes so much sense physicalized on stage. It's mm -hmm. it's truly like how Cher would would create a show about her life. Mm -hmm. um, and it's I think I think that's the biggest thing. I think. They just found the style with with the shares owning the story. Yep. Um, Leah wants to know: uh, Do you have any favorite onstage mishaps? It does not have to be from share; it can be from anything oh, that you've done. Oh my god, I love a mishap too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, somebody's wig fell off last night. I don't know. Even, yeah, I can say that. I can say that. So they were doing the opening number and. Um, <laughs> Jen's wig just fell off. Oh. And, and she was just like in a ball cap, you know, like a, her hair's pinned. And that was funny because they're doing this like sexy, like turn back time. And like her hair just like whew, fell off. <laughs> and she lit it. She just ran off stage. And we were like, <laughs> <laughs> um, LOL. There's so many. Wicked has so <laughs> many because Wicked's such a beast. Like, how could it not? Yeah, right. I remember my first week in Wicked, or not my week, but it was during, I tell the story a lot. It was during the Olympics, and um, 
There's a rope swing in the second act that Fiero comes on oh, this we long know Fiero's rope. rope yeah. Swing. Oh, it causes many injuries <laughs> actually. Comic. Yeah. And basically you're standing on a ladder backstage, like a very tall ladder, like and you hold on, you're like, here we go. And like you never know how it's gonna go. So you swing and I swung and I just kept spinning and I was like, oh no. <laughs> and I just kept spinning around in circles. And I did about three circles and I just let go and I landed. And I was actually facing Elphaba, and the stage is raked, too. So there's just many obstacles coming at you. <laughs> so I landed, and I was like, thank God. And I, like, forgot the audience was there. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and then I forgot all of my lines. And I was like, get out of here, Elphaba. Something, like, so <laughs> stupid. Um, but this... <laughs> Anyways, that was it. Wow. You're welcome. I'm never going to work at Wicked again. <laughs> <laughs> um... Amy wants to know, do you have a favorite bagel flavor? <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend, Amy. It is. Hi, Hello. Amy. It is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, Amy. Thank you so much for your question. Cinnamon raisel, raisin, cinnamon raisel. That's like a Cinnamon bean. raisel. Cin cin <laughs> yeah, what about Cinnamon it? raisin is uh, my favorite bagel flavor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not a big, ba I'm learning to like love bagels in New York. It's a new, a newer thing for me. There's a lot of calories and carbs in them. There is. Yeah. You won't find that at the share show, for, that's for sure. <laughs> that ensemble will throw it right back at you. <laughs> I'll say, get out of here. Are you, I'm serious. Oh. The ensemble is like strict, like no sweets. Really? Well, yeah, they're hardcore. I mean, I've seen the show. There's, it's a lot of bodies. There's a lot. There's, <laughs> there's a not lot much, of not many clothes and a lot of <laughs> abs and things. There's a lot of things happening. A lot of things happening true. up there. <laughs> yeah. All right, and uh, final question. Um, what sheer song do you find yourself singing off stage that isn't one of your own? <laughs> what sheer song do you like? I, I get that question all the time. Do you? And you're looking for like a good solid answer? No, I think I change my answer every time, so when people read my interviews, they're gonna be like, this kid's a liar. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I just love them all. Um, I really love Burlesque. Yes, come on. What's that song? What is that? I don't even... I well, watched it like that. I haven't seen the haven't seen a lot. That one. That's from Burlesque. Yeah, that that's Burlesque. That's bur dude. I'm in the share show. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm Teal, in it. Teal Wicks was here and she's never seen Burlesque. I want feel like we have to have a burlesque screening I for the so. cast of I know Stephanie's seen it. I would not be opposed. <laughs> I've seen it, it once, but like it was so I know. It was long ago. I know. I just think it's a lot of fun. Um, with a couple cocktails. I'm actually like, I'm so into, um, well, no, it's not in the show. What am I going to say? I was going to say her Mamma Mia album. I think it's so good. The her ABBA album. Mamma Mia. The, oh, oh, Cher's, Ma Cher's Alba, ABBA album. Yeah. yeah, of course. I'm sorry. I'm obsessed. Yeah. You love that. I love that. You love that. <laughs> but it's not in the show. No, that's um, okay. She appreciates it. You can download <laughs> it. Go download it now, Yeah, kids. it's a nice plug for yeah. Cher albums. Um, Honestly, like all of them. I got you, babe. It's so iconic. It never gets old. Yeah. And Jared and Michaela are so good. It's They're so authentic. It's so good. Um, did you ever have any... Rob worked in the bagel shop. Did you ever have any good, like, weird jobs? Like, did you work, when you were a kid or a teenager? Or, like, tell me, like... Oh, my God. I've done, it, I've done it all, Paul. Really? Um, all, all Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom owned a tanning salon when we were younger, and she would always make us tan. I was, like, a 12-year-old tanning. What? Tan mom? <laughs> She's not tan mom, the it famous was when tan it was mom. Like, it, was, it was in a fad, you know what I mean? She's she not owned tan a mom. Wait, back up. You said Pittsburgh, right? Pittsburgh. So your mom owned a tan salon. A tanning salon in and Pittsburgh. 12-year-old Michael, 12 -year -old Michael would get in the bed and, with, and tan. I would tan with my little goggles. Did you, you didn't work there. But, but you, and I worked there. And you worked and there. Worked what was your job there? I was like front desk. Okay, front desk. And I would clean the beds, which was I was, I was wondering, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty gross. <laughs> like, um, yeah, tan, like, can you, I don't even that's remember that concept. That's a weird environment Nobody, for a little kid to be around. Yeah. 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 It just like was normalized for me. It was just a kid. We would have like Sunday like, dinner and we'd be like, let's go to the tanning salon. And I'm the youngest of six. So like all six of us would like jump in the minivan and drive. So to the you're like salon. super tan in the winter? Yes, I was. <laughs> People just always thought I was very Italian. <laughs> and I still like feel like I carry like that pigment. Like I have like an olive pigment. I love it. It's from the tanning salon. Tanning salon, retail. I was I worked at Lululemon for a long time. Lululemon, okay. Oh, um, <laughs> I've done it. I was a gardener. I was a gardener. Are you good at it? No, are you kidding okay. me? <laughs> I just like got, I found the job. It was through a friend. Um, and he would be like, deplant this and plant this. And I was like, huh? And I would just like scoop stuff out and like put it in, like hope for the best. Just scooping and putting things in. That's but all the, it is. <laughs> but the terraces in New York are crazy. I saw some like terraces that I didn't even know existed uh -huh. in New York City. Some apartments that were unbelievable. So that was a, that was a plus. Oh, you did it in New York. 
And now, yeah. you're in the show show. Yeah. <laughs> Playing at the Neil Simon Theater on West 52nd Street. Just look for the Let's Do This Bitches sign. The front of the house is fantastic, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it is. It's just, it's just fabulous. It's yeah. everything it should be. Yeah. Michael, thank you for being hey, here. thank you so much. Thank you for making your hair look so good. Uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? All right. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. You can listen to this interview and so many others by searching hashtag live at five wherever you get your podcast and listen to them. Tune in next week as we are joined by stars from Wicked, if you've probably heard of it, The Lion King, also probably heard of that, and Anastasia. So tune in. It'll be a good time.